Hello everyone and welcome to the tutorial. Today we will be talking about how to perform a VLOOKUP function in Microsoft Excel 2016. We will be analyzing a sales data set that I found on the internet. Uh, very basic, it just provides us with unique PO numbers, order date, the sales region, sales representative, the item sold, unit sold, unit cost, and the total. So what I would like to accomplish from this tutorial is I would like to just build a simple tool that allows a user to input a PO number into uh, cell J5. And then we get some PO information to the right of it. So maybe we get like the order date or the region or something. Uh, I like to begin in cell K5 and just go ahead and enter equal sign VL and then hit tab to autocomplete and we're greeted with the VLOOKUP function along with its arguments. So the first argument is the lookup value. Now, when you're considering which value to use as your lookup value, ask yourself, what is the leftmost, most unique piece of data in your data set, right? And in our particular example, it happens to be the PO number. It's the very first column in the data set, and it's also very unique. A bad example would be the region because it's not unique at all. Uh, there's only about like three different options or so. So for the lookup value, we're just going to want to pass in the cell J5. And that's going to be where we're going to enter our lookup value. Next, we're asked what our table array is going to be. And that just pretty much means uh, where's our data in this workbook. Uh, so you just want to highlight your data, right? And I'm not really interested in the column names, so we could just go ahead and skip that and start at A2 and just do Control shift down and Control shift right Okay, now we have our table array. We can move on to the column index number. Now the column index number pretty much just means which column within this selected table array would you like to reference? Now in this cell, I'm looking for the order date, so I'm going to pass in the number two because I'm looking for the second column in the, da in the data set, right? And then finally, we're asked if we want an a approximate match or an exact match. Now, I personally always go with exact match when I'm using a VLOOKUP. It's very rare that I'll ever use the approximate match. So just go ahead and select false and hit the tab to autocomplete. And you could just go ahead and close off the function. Now, of course, we're going to see a, an NA because J5 is currently blank. So go ahead and select a PO number that you'd like to use. Uh, 404 seems to be a good one. So let's just go ahead and do 404. And then we have some data. So we have a date. Uh, and then we could just confirm that it's the correct date. And yes, it is. Okay, we're in good shape. Now, what if we want some more data? Maybe I want the region or the sales rep. I have two options. I can either perform these steps again in each cell, uh, which is very time consuming, or I can make this formula dynamic and I can just drag it across, right? And that's the approach I'd like to take. So uh, for the sake of it looking nice, let's just go ahead and copy the column names over. And I like to just number my columns, okay? So let's just go ahead and do that. And we can dra drag that across. So we got eight columns, that's good. Now let's focus on making um, this function more dynamic. And the first thing we wanna ask ourselves when we plan on dragging functions or formulas over is we wanna ask ourselves what needs to be locked down. So does the lookup value need to be locked down? The answer is yes, because that's where we are entering our PO number. We always want to enter it inside of J5. If we were to leave it unlocked, then when we're dragging the formula across, it would then turn into K5 or L5, and that's not what we want. We want to keep it at J5. So just go ahead and hit F4 on your keyboard to lock that down. And the same rule applies for the table array, right? Um, if we were to leave it unlocked and we started dragging the formula across, it would literally drag this table array over to the right. So we, that would mean we'd really just be referencing a bunch of blank data over here. And we want to avoid that at all costs because we're not interested in blank data. So let's just go ahead and hit F4. Okay. And then the column index number. Right now we uh, currently have a hard-coded number 
uh, insert it into the column index number. And that's fine if you're just interested in the order date, but if we plan on referencing the region or the sales representative, we need to make this a bit more dynamic. So let's just replace the number two with the cell K3, okay? And now the cell K3 holds the value two, so we'll still be looking at order date information, but it's a bit more dynamic now. So when I drag this formula to the right, it'll then transition to L instead of K, right? So if it's L, uh, that means it's holding the value three, and then I could look at the region information, okay? And if we wanted to be safe, we could just go ahead and uh, lock down the third row. So we lock out the, the three part of K3, but let's just keep K dynamic. Let's keep K free because we want K to change as we drag it. We want it to change to L if we move it to the right, okay? So go ahead and hit F4 a couple times until it looks like that. So K is free and three is locked down. And then of course we wanna keep it at false, right? So just go ahead and hit enter. We see that the date didn't change, so that's good. That means we're in good shape so far and we didn't break anything. And now we could just go ahead and grab and drag the formula across to the right. And we can see we got some data. Now, of course, we're gonna have to change this to be general instead of date data, right? And then we could just compare, we could go ahead and compare 404 from the raw data to 404 from our VLOOKUP values. And we could just confirm that the data is accurate, and it is. And now what's nice about this is we could go ahead and insert any PO number that we're interested in. So maybe I'm interested in 488 instead. So go ahead and enter 488. And then we saw that our data changed a bit, right? And it's identical to 488 in the raw data. Now, that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and go ahead and comment what you'd like to see next. Thank you.